Welcome, everyone, to another Nurse Dramas podcast. I'm Dr. Pants. Lambo. I'm Punk. And we're here to bring you uh, some discussion between three nerds about gaming this past month. Mm-hmm. It is uh, the end of January 2020, beginning of February 2020. Mm, 2020. Yeah. yeah, I know. I don't think I need my glasses anymore, guys. Mm-mm. <sighs> you beat me to it. I was going to make the joke. <laughs> I was really going to make that joke. and uh... Everything's so clear now. <laughs> I'm, so I'm, I'm done. I, I can't. I can't. I made jokes up until the new year, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it's already old. Yeah, it's yeah, much like us. Uh huh. Oh, oh, it's oh yeah, yeah. You know, actually, my 2020 began a lot like my 90s, because I'm sitting there playing Pokemon on my Switch, <laughs> mm-hmm. watching Mighty Morphin Power Rangers on Netflix, and it was just like, wow. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that at all. Oh, no, but it just felt like the 90s. Mm. That sounds good. That sounds real good. I mean, I think I did the same thing, just not Power Rangers. I was watching anime. So. Oh, yeah. Which basically my 90s also. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, let's talk about the things that happened in January. So this was just recent. Activision Blizzard entered a multi-year deal with Google. To exclusively broadcast like their esports content, like the Overwatch League, I think the Hearthstone content, like all of that, they're going to be on YouTube instead of Twitch. Which, oh, yeah, that like that's kind of big, right? Yeah, it, it's kind of funny because YouTube has had so many issues in the past year with like, you know, just uh, you know, just one gaff after another with like you know, Kappa and all that stuff, like. Why are they still going after things that young kids want to watch? If they, <laughs> well, I, I think it's also because, um, well, the whole thing with Kappa was supposed to hit. Yeah, and oh, it, it did. It, it, did. it did. Yeah, and a lot of YouTubers I follow who mm-hmm. do say toy reviews and gaming and whatnot, they're all kind of like, oh, we're good, because mm-hmm. it because everybody made it sound way worse than it actually was. Apparently, yeah, and it was the whole thing. If you mark your content is not for kids, yeah. Then you were, then we're probably okay. We're probably okay. Probably. What Maybe. kids want to watch us anyway? Yeah. <laughs> us. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's like a is there a trend of like people leaving Twitch or like things leaving Twitch? Uh, well, there's just... some like more up like high profile things, but it's usually they get led away with money, not necessarily yeah. the yeah you know, any other good reason. Yeah. So I'm assuming you know Activision Blizzard, same thing. You know, it was right. money, but. It, it is the high-profile people, but at the same time, if the high-profile people leave, then are you just going to go to Twitch to watch the, the no-names? Because yeah. they're – oh, really? No. Uh, I was going to say, I don't, <laughs> I don't watch Twitch. No, no, but, but the, it's it's sort of actually just like a good indicator because the people with actual money who are outside the – I'll use it again – the gamosphere. Yeah. <laughs> outside the gamosphere – um, they, you know, them throwing money at it, it kind of like legitimizes it, you know? Oh, absolutely. And it becomes sort of like the big times, you know? Yeah. I, st- I still get people who, uh, claim, oh, esports aren't really sports. Why are we calling it sports? Blah, blah. There was, there was an ES, there's an ESPN issue dedicated to it now. Like they cover it. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. they cover it on ESPN. Itself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So like it, it is a thing. I don't watch it. I don't really care, but that's how I feel about normal sports. So what's the difference? <laughs> I, I drop in now and then uh, only for Siege. Because okay. it's my game. You yeah, know? Yeah, but, I like to yeah. see like the tactics I, I, I think that would like be that. 100% it. Like, if, if, if you don't like football but you like basketball, you're going to be more likely to watch it. Yeah. You know, the game itself kind of matters. Right. I'm just not interested in watching League of Legends. I'm just not interested in watching, like – rts gameplay and whatever starcraft and stuff you know what though even though i'm into games like pokemon i'm into the pokemon trading card game i Uh still don't watch the league matches on those because like i don't really think like to me those wouldn't be that interesting like all right you just use flamethrower cool oh 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 have you ever like but still i know they get more (laughs) in depth than that but with siege i feel like how the game is it totally changes depending on what you do right like that's why I love watching because I love seeing the new tactics or the new angles people get. And like, wow, I didn't think about doing that. I'm gonna try that the next time I play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whereas the thing that, that makes it really cool though is too is that like in if in real sports there's a huge barrier to entry into like actually playing like and doing like things that are people who are professional. Mm-hmm. Where you could just get all the cards off eBay for like you know the the top person's Pokemon deck. That means nothing. <laughs> I, I know it means nothing, but you, you would have it's everything you need to get there. Except the, the skill. And well, the heart of the cards. 
heart no, of the, the heart of the cards is in the cards, not you. Yeah, but friendship. <laughs> friendship. Yeah, power De- friendship. Definitely. Uh, as, yeah. I, I mean, as someone who plays the card game, I'm, I'm going to freely admit that, like, it, mm-hmm. you can have the cards. Yeah. Absolutely. Totally. But that's the same with most other games. Like, you could have anything for the game, have all the equipment and whatnot. That doesn't make you good at it. Mm-hmm. You still have to be good at it. Yeah. You still have to know the deck, how it works and whatnot. So, mm-hmm. but, uh,. On that note, I'd like to mention that I started playing the trading card game online for Pokemon, and I am I'm so sad. I can't stop, guys. Is it a cult, whole, wholly separate thing, like with digital cards and stuff? So when you buy a pack of cards, there's a little card inside that you can put the code in, and it gives you a digital pack. Oh, no. Uh-huh. That's dangerous. Uh-oh. Is that why you've started? <laughs> no, I started because uh, League opened up oh, near okay. me, and I've started playing. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah. I used to play the trading card game for uh, Game Boy. For Pokemon. Oh my god, I love that game. It was mm-hmm. fun. I didn't understand what was going on, but it was fun. <laughs> they released it on 3DS, and I downloaded it, but I barely played it because by that point, the cards are so old and the rules have changed yeah. so much. Yeah, it's very yeah. different. Yeah, Sword and Shield's coming out soon, and they're actually changing the rules again. Huh. So it's like everything I just relearned how to do, mm-hmm. I have to change. Not helpful. Yeah. But, uh, well, that, that changed topics real quick. Let's move on. <laughs> so the Witcher TV series apparently, like, did phenomenally. I thought it was amazing. Yeah, I, I got, like, two episodes, and I'm, I'm going to wait till I have some, like, time etched out. But mm-hmm. it looks actually like a lot of fun. Yeah, so. I'm actually going to read the books. I haven't read yeah. them before, and I actually just bought a bunch of them to just start reading. Because I thought it was so great. I, I didn't watch it. Give it a go. Yeah, I throw pr- the first I'm episode I'm probably on not going to care. Just Why? throw the first episode. Uh, because it's it's high fantasy, and I don't like high fantasy. Just, just try it. I'll try it. <laughs> exactly. You, you, here, here. A little taste for free. <laughs> You're pushing it on me. Um, but on that, they're making a Witcher anime movie for Netflix. Now, I use anime loosely because it's the studio behind Legend of Korra, Avatar The Last Airbender, Voltron. Like, they're the ones doing it, and they're, you know, not a Japanese studio, but they've got that anime style. Mm. But apparently, you know, it did so well. They're like, well, let's do an animated movie until yeah. season two comes out. You yeah. Know? I mean, as as long as it has Toss a Coin to Your Witcher. I'll I swear yeah. <laughs> to God. I don't know what the song is. I haven't heard it. But anytime I see a meme, Toss I want to punch. To your Witcher. I want to punch somebody in the face. <laughs> I'm so tired. It's like Baby Yoda. I want to punch <laughs> Baby Yoda in the face. Because you haven't watched The Mandalorian. and then. But you, it's you, everywhere. You Just wanna hug stop. It. No, no. <laughs> I just uh. Someone made a Baby Jabba. Oh, I saw that. Oh yeah. no, it, it was adorable. Yeah, it's Wait, a lot really? than you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> my opinion. Mm. Anyway, moving on from that, there was a big announcement. <clears throat> we got the last character in the Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Fighter Pass, and everybody was speculating who it was going to be. Was it going to be Dante? Was it going to be Sora? Because you know Sakurai was holding up the three, uh-huh. and everyone's like, "Oh, it's something from three. Yeah, it was a Fire Emblem Three Houses character. We got Byleth." Which, Don't we have enough Fire Emblem characters? No! <laughs> no! There's never enough! The roster is now mostly Fire Emblem characters. <laughs> it's not mostly Fire Emblem characters. There's like eight. That's There's more than there are Mario characters. <laughs> Hold on. Mario, Luigi, uh-huh. Yoshi, uh-huh. Peach, yeah. Daisy, yeah. Bowser, uh-huh. Bowser Jr., uh-huh. Wario. Yeah. I'm tied right now, and I could throw in Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong doesn't count. Yeah, no. he does. He was. Nope. He started nope. as a Mario nope. character. Nope. Nope. Started as a Mario nope. character. Nope. 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 No, Mario is. started as a Donkey Kong Donkey Kong character. I feel like I'm I'm still missing one though. Pir- Piranha Plant. Piranha Plant. I, I'm sorry. Oh! I'm sorry. I oh! helped you. Oh, there's no, no, no. nine. But but it still like puts nope. it up there. Is, no. fi- yeah. is Fire Emblem as important as Mario? There's more games in the Fire Emblem series than probably Mario games. <laughs> if you don't count all the crazy <laughs> side Mario games. Like, Fucking, like he's, he's making all these concessions. Nope. Oh, like we haven't made concessions before. But uh, I, I, so I got to ask because in all honesty, I didn't care. Like, whatever. Because they also announced that there was another fighter pass coming out. If they didn't announce the next fighter pass, it would have been bad. That's what I think. No. Like for me, personally, I, w- I would have felt cheated. Right. I'm like, this is it. This is all we're going to get. So, it, it, it's well known that Sakurai loves Fire Emblem. That's, like, that's his baby. He loves that series. Now that there was a new one that came out, and it was a big hit, like, obviously, we were going to get someone in there. And, of course, you know, we got the character we play as. Mm-hmm. Um. In all honesty, if they hadn't made it part of the fighter pass, I could have seen it afterwards. If they hadn't announced another fighter pass, Mm -hmm. they'd be like, eh, we're going to throw Byleth in there. But, like... It would have been a better idea to throw it in the second fighter pass. 
I think they then it would have been far enough away. Eh, I think I think they wanted to ride the hype train because it was still within like the the little bit of Fire Emblem coming out. Uh, now it does get released this week. It's on Thursday. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, the thirtieth of January is when the update hits and Byleth will be in the game. Um, but I, I mean, I, you would have felt cheated if they had announced another fighter pass. But how do you feel otherwise? Do you care at all? I I, I don't care. I'm I, I just another Fire Emblem character. I'm never gonna play as. Punk? I don't play Smash enough to really care at all. So okay. Well, you're a Fire Emblem fan. I know you liked. Yeah, three houses. I mean, I don't, I, again, I just don't really play Smash enough to really. All right, yay, cool. <laughs> Woo! Mm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna play as Byleth because I like playing as Fire Emblem characters, like trying them because I like the sword fighter characters, and I love the fact that in the announcement he made a joke about another sword fighter character, mm-hmm. and also he taught us how to count in binary. Did you guys watch the announcement? No. Okay. I skimmed it. Yeah, he actually <laughs> taught everyone to count in binary. Because he was counting through the Fire Emblem games, and he was doing like this weird thing with his fingers. Mm-hmm. And he goes, oh, if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm counting in binary, and this is how you do it. And at some point, he looks like he's flipping <laughs> off the camera because he gets this. And he's like, and this is, I don't remember what number. Yeah. But then that became a meme because he's like, hey, yeah. everybody, I'm putting Byleth in the game. Here you go. <laughs> so, but, he uh, must have done it on purpose. Okay, so now we've got six more fighters coming out. Mm-hmm. Just, I'm just going to ask for a fun question. Yeah. If you could put one character from anywhere in it, legitimately. I'm pushing for Doom Guy. Pushing for Doom Guy? Doom Guy. Punk? Well, you said legitimately, so now I can't. What were you going to say <laughs> not legitimately? I'll say Goku. Dr. Pants. Oh, okay. I'm actually in the game. I made my me. I'm there. So, But I was. I thought you were going to be like, Goku! I was like, please don't. No, he would just take the take the game away. Um, I think just to have the trifecta get Crash Bandicoot in there. Trifecta yeah. of what? Of like classic game mascots. Roger. Oh, okay. Because then you have, oh yeah, and, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I I feel like that's a little too ingrained in the PlayStation thing, but uh, literally because Ratchet, I think, like yeah. has yeah. never been anywhere off of PlayStation, whereas Crash has. So. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's possible. There, there's there's all kinds of rumors going around. As soon as they announced the Fighter Pass, they were like, "Oh, Crash Bandicoot's gonna be the next one." It's like, calm down, guys. We yeah, just... it would be cool. I yeah. I because I, I, then you would have you know Mario, Sonic, and Crash. No. Yeah. Legitimately, mm-hmm. like. I don't know. Any I mean, like, Doom Guy would be kind of cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, I would like to see Dante in it as well. But I don't... I don't Another really don't... sword fighter? Come on, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't play Smash enough and really care. So what? Okay. I, yeah, that's fair. I guess more female representation would be cool. If, if I could pick mm-hmm. any character, uh, I, I, I still want to see Cosmos in it. I want to see some kind of, like... Recognition that Xenosaga was a thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, with Xenoblade doing really well, it'd be nice to see that, especially because Bandai Namco has ties to Smash and everything. My other pick would be any character from Golden Sun. Like, it was a three, like, it had three games on Nintendo. It is a Nintendo property. Can I please, please get some recognition that yeah. Golden Sun I'm going to say pretty much all of them in the next Fighter Pass are going to be, like, um, some kind of, like, uh, Third party. promotion pretty much yeah probably for some other game that's going to hit the switch sometime in the next year for probably. that's already out yeah the witcher <laughs> <laughs> we got we got Geralt already and then in... toss a coin could be one of the songs in oh. the game i will trade my copy of smash <laughs> in i will trade it in <clears throat> actually i think i was going to say that for what oh if they put sora from kingdom hearts in i was going to make the claim that like if sora shows up i'm trading my copy of <laughs> smash in i'm done which actually is a segue into our next thing. Mm-hmm. Kingdom Hearts 3 got its DLC. More DLC? It's the first DLC. So I'm not going <laughs> to lie. So so I started Kingdom Hearts. I had some issues with the the things. I just... I, I, I thought the battle system, it was fun, but there was too much going on that I didn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking about the combat or the story? The battle system. Yeah, the combat. Oh, okay, but not the well, story. I mean, the story. Yeah, the story made total yeah. sense to me. I, mean, I, I, I think the kind of randomness of all the finishing moves yeah. and stuff was a little like kind of weird because some of them felt like context sensitive. Like, uh-huh. okay, they specifically gave me this one because it's like helpful here or it's like themed to this. Like the one boss, like the colossal boss or whatever. Yeah, yeah. That, that made sense. Mm-hmm. But the other ones, like the regular battles against uh, the Heartless, yeah. it was just kind of like, all right, well, I did this one like three times in a row. I feel like <laughs> I can do something else. Yeah. Or I hope I don't get that one because it doesn't make sense for this battle yeah even the ability to like you know choose which ones are available to you during a fight would be like way more helpful 
Because certain ones you get, like the stupid goofy one, the goofy cannon or whatever oh, it yeah. was. <laughs> like sometimes that was really helpful, and then sometimes it just did not work for whatever you were doing. So you called it the goofy one, and I wasn't sure if you were referring to the fact that Goofy was in no, it. No, no. It it's it's if, Goofy. If it was straight no, up Goofy. It's definitely They're goofy. all Goofy. Yeah. Like, there's the one girl in the teacups. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, because they're all based on rides in Disney World. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't play it, and, like, I'm pretty sure that of anyone here, I was probably the biggest Kingdom Hearts fan in the beginning. Definitely, yeah. Because, like, I, I got Kingdom Hearts 1 really early. I got Kingdom Hearts 2 within the first week. I beat it within a week. I loved it. And I did not get three. I have pre- I'm have i pretty sure I've made my claim on this yeah, show yeah. that, like, I did not care. It's been too long. There's been too many side stories. I've tried watching YouTube videos about the story to try and figure out what's going on. I don't get it. And I don't care anymore. And then when they announced that there were no Final Fantasy characters in three, it's like, mm. then what are we doing? Mm-hmm. It's just a Disney game with random anime protagonists? Like, <laughs> cool. That's well, not what I, I... Well, you're getting your Final Fantasy characters soon. Yeah, in the DLC, which... <laughs> I think the DLC is actually out. I have no idea. Yeah. I don't know either. Like, that's it how much I It just basically means Square Enix has basically lost their soul. That's like, that's what's going on. And, that, and that's what I wanted to talk about because, yeah. like, in the past few years, like, Square is doing some really questionable things. And people absolutely love it. Mm-hmm. But, like, I'm I'm stepped back. I'm away from it now. And, like, Punk, I know you love Final Fantasy XV. Yeah, but like, <laughs> yeah. and and I wouldn't I, say love, but yeah, I really well, enjoyed it. You almost made it your game of the decade, right? Or the game of the year, the year yeah, it came out, right? So you really did enjoy yeah. it. Yeah, but like we've talked about on this show that like mm-hmm. it had a huge problem with its DLC, in that like mm-hmm. the episode prompto episode, uh, Ignis and all that, like yeah. they were, it looked like they just cut it from the story and made it DLC, and that's that's a garbage move, right? And, like, I love that people – and I'm going to keep bringing this up because yeah. it really bothers me. People are saying Game Freak is worse than EA because of the whole Pokemon thing, the whole Dexit thing. What? The, the So <laughs> – Sorry. Engage, What's a Dexit? Is this a thing? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's a play on Brexit. It was the idea that they removed all the Pokemon from the Pokedex. Oh, God. I didn't know they had a name for it. Wow. No, Holy I, crap. I have not you... been a part of say, the same circle as you are. Whoa. <laughs> no. okay, anyway, um, the whole Dexit. idea that they removed the Pokemon and then now they're technically coming back in the DLC, people are screaming that Game Freak is worse than EA. Which, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, uh... I'm not on that train. But then I look at Square Enix and, like, they cut parts of Final Fantasy XV story and made it DLC. Right. They added in all this other stuff. Plus, the game was was kind of broken to begin with. In that, like, it was glitchy. It was really glitchy. Uh, yeah, yeah. And now, Kingdom Hearts, like, Kingdom Hearts three had no Final Fantasy characters to start, and that's like kind of what that game was. Yeah, based it was kind around. of the draw, right? Like, Final yeah. Fantasy meets Disney. It's like stupid, you know? Yeah. But now the DLC adds them back in. Like, but, where were they? They were just. And where are they going to be? We would have to have played the story. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie to you guys. Even if that game is... I, I think I can get it for less than 20 now somewhere. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. No, I'm not going to do it. I don't care anymore. You sure? Yeah, it's been so long. What if I buy it for you? <laughs> you your birthday's coming up. <laughs> Side note. If somebody gets me a game as a gift, I feel obliged to play it. See? <laughs> that is the only reason that I played and beat... Dragon Ball Z Sagas on the PS2. <laughs> One of the most garbage video games I've ever played. But, mm-hmm. like, yeah, what's going on with Square Enix? Yeah. I mean, so they have control of a lot of cool properties. I'm going to say they've been killing it with Just Cause. Avengers looks really cool. I'm super excited for you it. Know, and it looks like they're doing the right things with Avengers. And I'm not upset about the, the delays and stuff that we'll talk about later. Yeah. But, like... So they do have an arm of their whole thing that's doing well. Tomb Raider games are always a hit. People like them. They always hit the the bargain bin pretty quickly, but, you know, whatever. And then, um, I, I don't know. I don't know. I've just kind of seen, like, I, I feel like Square's not Square anymore. They're not in my corner when it comes to all the their Japanese properties. Yeah. No, I can agree. So the thing is, is... um. The Japanese properties are that that's like holy square, whereas mm-hmm. the ones that aren't like Tomb Raider and yeah, just some of their them, acquisitions they've made over the years, like Crystal right. Dynamics so I think those stuff. are still owned by or not owned, but like they're yeah, still pre- a part of those development pretty studios, pretty much developed but and operated by others. Right. 
so yeah, I don't know what's going on with the Japanese studio. They're they're trying to go like triple A title with season passes and whatnot, and I, they're not doing it right. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a little disconcerting. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. I the fifteen had a lot going for it, and I think I was on the the very much like positive side of fifteen up until like the last couple of DLCs came out because it seemed like. You know, they were at least making a, a full experience, and that if you were to play the whole thing, even when it was all done, even if you had to buy all the DLC, it was going to be kind of cool and full. Yeah. And it took me a while, I think, to kind of just, like, realize that the, you know, it's a beautiful game, so much cool stuff that actually happens in it, but then there's a lot of, like, just empty labor placed into places that probably didn't need it. There's too many needless side quests. You could literally spend years wandering that open world and doing dumb stuff. <laughs> Or doing nothing because it was really empty. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, when I count how many, you know, hours I probably spent just, like, just fast traveling in the car, you know, to get places yeah. and stuff. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. yeah. I just, I, my, my whole thing with 15 that I really, like, really bothered me was the moment in the game where, um, is it Galio? Yeah. Oh, Gladio. Gladius. Gladius. Gladio. Wow, I, I just right. wow, it's been a while, man. Gladiolus is his full name. Yeah, Gladiolus. Yeah. When yeah. when he's like, I'm leaving, and he disappears, and then like an hour back into the game, this person shows up in a costume and he's like, Hey, help me out with this mission. I'm like, Well, it's Gladio. <laughs> where was he for this hour? And they don't bring it up in the game at all. And it's like, Oh, if you want to figure out where he went in this one hour for no real reason, get the DLC. And I'm like, Uh oh. Yeah, that's a problem. That is a problem. And then like spoilers, but there's like a big prompto reveal in the end of the game where mm -hmm. it's like he's supposed to be like a magitech soldier or something mm -hmm. yeah and it's like where did this come from mm -hmm. uh -huh. but apparently if you play episode prompto you find out more it's like no no if you're gonna make this a big story point it has to be in the game otherwise you're selling us an incomplete mm -hmm. package and even the whole like if you wanted to do all the like the extra parts of the dungeons and stuff and get to like level 100 and whatever we're talking like way too much grinding for not enough you know not enough payoff so um i think that's been like the, the major issue about it and yeah, sorry no, go ahead. talk about those dungeons yeah those dungeons were actually very boring <laughs> yeah they literally well, ex go except for there there was this like o like locked door that made me go like how do i get in this locked door and you need to be like a certain level and have done yeah. It already yeah to and get in through it you go through it mm -hmm. and it's like okay cave normal cave with, with black walls mm -hmm. nothing like special or pretty about it okay big room monsters kill the monsters all right go into the next you know little tunnel system it looks exactly the same as the last one mm -hmm. oh another big open room oh that has two passageways which one do i go to and they looked exactly the same yeah it was pretty the, the 14 dungeons were way more interesting like way more oh, interesting yeah. do you mean 14 or 13 yeah. 14 okay the mmo yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Do you remember the, every 14 dungeon was actually like no, no. interesting? No, no, no. I agree with and you. I was actually going to make parts. the claim that like people say 13 was boring because it was just nothing but corridors, mm -hmm. but at least all of them look different. <laughs> like at least I can yeah. tell you what like each part of the game yeah, looked like. Yeah. yeah. And you could run back through the whole thing too. Right. Yeah. Uh, but and we're, we're we're harping on 15. <clears throat> yeah. But like Kingdom Hearts 3 also like the idea of taking away the Final Fantasy characters and having to like figure out the story to have to play all this backstory. Stuff was crazy. Mm -hmm. And then let's, let's talk about the 7 remake. Yeah. I'm still, like, while I was going to be okay with it, the more I thought about the more that, like, that first game is just Midgar. Yeah. And they're, we're basically going to end up spending, like, I don't know how much money to get the full game. But if, if the first game is just Midgar, yeah. this could end yeah. up being, like, potentially, like, a $300 series. Which, I mean, I'll just wait until all of it comes out and then they'll release the Final Fantasy VII game collection. Yeah, on the PS6. Like yeah, I was gonna say seven, but okay, <laughs> you know, because Final Fantasy seven. I mean, it does look very good. Yeah. I didn't actually play all the way through seven. I think I was actually still in Midgar, and I was a kid, so I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, I'll play it, but I'm not gonna play. I'm not gonna buy each individual one. I'm gonna wait until like all of it's out mm -hmm. and then play it. Yeah, it might be more of a worthwhile experience because they haven't rolled out the possibility of individual dlcs for the individual games too which based on what they've been doing yeah i could a possibility and is, if they yeah. do something like that that's immediately like the big red flag that first of all i'm gonna wait just like yeah uh, that's the right idea at this yeah. point you know but you know that and and the idea that you would definitely be starting from scratch after each game pretty much yeah that like 
people are going to level the one level 100 that's just the way it's going to happen you know well wait, it, it, wait 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 yeah. back up yeah starting from scratch at each one yeah i'm it's, they're gonna have to do that uh but continue yeah yeah i, I was gonna say dot hack did it so why not if a ps2 you started off at level one each game no you started off at like a minimum level for each one. The I GU thought, series. I don't know about the original. Dot no, hack. the original ones. What I'm talking okay. about. Well, the GU I'm pretty seri- sure. Yeah, GU series. You if you didn't transfer over. Yeah. All your data, you start off at like the minimum level. So say it was like level thirty or something like that. You start off with that one. I'm pretty sure in the in the original series you start off at level one each time, but I could uh-huh. be wrong because uh-huh. it's it's been however long. Mm-hmm. But anyways. But but the sense of progression through the whole story will kind of go away. I think if you do that. I I don't know how they're gonna do it. Because it's going to cross generations, 100%. It has yeah. to. I mean, yeah. we're getting the PS4 copy, and the PS5 is going to hit in, like, yeah. six months after that. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And while the PS5 might be backwards compatible, I mean, considering how long it took the first edition of this to hit, how long is it going to be till we get the second part? Mm-hmm. And I can't imagine it's only going to be two chapters if the first one's just Midgar. Yeah. And then and then let, let's move into our next topic. They delayed it. Yeah. Now, mm-hmm. it was only, like, a month. Because I think they delayed it from March to April. Yeah. Which was... Month and a half-ish, yeah. Yeah, which yeah. was a little odd to me. Like, why only delay it, like, a month? Well, and especially in this day and age, and it, because of the, you know, the, the idea you can patch things and all that kind of stuff, like, uh-huh. it actually especially seemed like a weird thing to me. It seemed to me that, and I could be totally <laughs> off, that they were trying to hit, like, and compete with Cyberpunk. As opposed to, say, competing with Persona 5. Mm-hmm. Like, why compete with another JRPG? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe throw it out there against a game that's not like it and maybe, you know, mm-hmm. do that. And that's definitely coming out right near Persona. <laughs> so It was. Persona 5 yeah. Royal, as I've said many yeah. times, comes out March 31st. A yep. game I'm very much looking forward <laughs> yep. to. Yep, yep, mm-hmm. yep, yep. So. But joke's on them after competing against Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk was pushed back as well. Yeah, but that was delayed afterwards, and I'm wondering if <laughs> Cyberpunk was like, no, we're not going to go against oh, there, you. And, there's no. definitely some conspiracy yeah. theories out there that w- one, the one delay pushed all the other delays, possibly. It did mm. come out, though, that they said that Cyberpunk was not running well on current generation consoles. Okay. So that's one reason why they did push it back. I also heard it's not releasing <clears throat> with the multiplayer, too. Oh, the multiplayer. They yeah, they, they said originally the multiplayer was. Not, yeah. was oh, did they? Right away. Yeah, I only saw that recently. So yeah, I mean, a lot of speculations and multiplayer is not coming out until like twenty twenty two or something like that. I oh don't my know. God! All right. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> but, okay. Yeah. Cool. But uh, uh, so speaking of delays, Final Fantasy VII remake got pushed back. <clears throat> um, Avengers got pushed back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is this is Square Enix and yeah. like making me go, what Square? What are you doing? Mm. What are you doing? But also. Uh, we just said Cyberpunk got delayed till fall, and that yep. might be – it's not running correctly on current-gen systems, yeah. so maybe they push it back because we've got the Xbox Series X yep. coming out and the <laughs> PS5. Yep. Yeah. Sorry, I just And stopped. maybe a Switch update. We'll maybe see. a Switch update, but that's yeah. not going to be a new system. That's just no. going to be a right. a mid-generation yeah. upgrade. Whatever, whatever you want to call it. But we also don't have to worry about that with Cyberpunk because no. – but maybe they're just pushing it back for that. Mm-hmm. And then it just got announced that Dying Light 2 was delayed indefinitely. Yeah. I saw that, and I was like, indefinitely? What's this? What? <laughs> that means forever. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's Duke Nukem forever. <laughs> delayed indefinitely. We'll see it in 10 years, and no one will care. Duke Nukem, I don't know if it ever truly got delayed, delayed. It, they, they always kept talking about it, and it was, like, going to come out, and there was, like, speculation about when. It never got a solid date, I don't think, ever. Yeah. Until like they finally were gonna put it out in two thousand one or two thousand eleven, right? I don't remember. You bought it. Was tw- it. it was twenty eleven. I, I remember. I bought it as well. <laughs> oh, <laughs> did it, you beat it? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Oh, it, so it was you, delightful. I, yeah. I it it wasn't bad in any sort of way. It just wasn't super super amazing. It was campy. <laughs> yeah, campy, yeah. dumb, maybe a little outdated, but mm, yeah. but fun. With Dying Light two, I didn't know there was gonna be a Dying Light two. <laughs> Oh, it's been oh, a yeah. while. Oh, they've been announcing yeah. that for a while. Yeah. Wasn't there like a trailer a couple of years ago that had Jack Black in it? <laughs> You're Whoa. asking the wrong guy. I didn't know yeah, Dying Light like, 2 was even there. It was a scene like someone running across the like down the beach and like everyone's getting eaten by zombies behind him, but he has like music in. So he's just like, you know, jamming his tunes. Oh my god. Oh my god. I think I do remember that. Remember that? Oh wow. Wow. Yeah. And then like a van comes up and it's like Jack Black is in the van. <laughs> <laughs> I think I do remember that. Holy crap. Was it like a CG with Jack Black? Like, uh, I don't know if. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if they actually saw him or if it was just his voice. I can't remember. It's been a hmm. while. But, like, I never played the original Dying Light. 
I remember people like really enjoying it. It was fun. Yeah. So it. I mean, I'm sure there were a lot of people looking forward to the sequel. I don't know what this what the stipulation is behind this being delayed indefinitely, but it was just like, oh, another delay. Like there's been a lot of delays lately. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so this comes off hot off the heels of a lot of stories that come out of EA and a couple of places last year where working conditions for completing a game have been like horribly dismal. There's like this horrible crunch to finish the game. And, you know, sometimes it ends up with shoddy results. Um, so like th- there's like all that Mass Effect and Andromeda stuff that kind of came out. It was about a year ago now. Yeah. Um, about like the working conditions and uh-huh. how they, they did a big crunch at the end of two and three and it like worked out like super great but they did at the end of andromeda and it like you know there was just something missing i guess yeah yeah i don't know i don't know because it's all we're also in the year of a new system like a new generation hitting yeah so is it tied to that at all see i think it's weird that they're like i i figured the the the, this part of the year was front loaded with a bunch of great releases because they were going to wait for some like even better releases later on and now this is going to interact a little bit with like people getting new systems uh, yeah as far as i'm concerned but then I think like maybe maybe they're not expecting a whole lot of people to buy stuff because maybe they're saving up for the new systems. Maybe they're preparing for that. Like I don't know. But then why put like the the you know the the big purchase you want to make right next to the new console release? Like it, yeah, because now yeah. the way I think of it, like I would have rather bought these games beforehand and mm-hmm. then kept them for my PS4, get the PS5 later on instead of spending a big chunk of money all at once. Because I'm gonna want Cyberpunk for PS5. I'm gonna want. Blah, 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 and blah, blah, two, whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, and the, uh, here's my other thought, too, is maybe they're also putting these in the fall, not not because not because they think everybody's going to buy a new system and wants these games for it, but maybe they're just doing that for the pe- to kind of double dip. Mm-hmm. People are going to buy the new system, but also let's have stuff for the current gen. Yeah. Because if somebody doesn't get the system, at least they have something to purchase. Right. At least they have something big to yeah. get. When the last gen hit, there was that whole, like, you get the upgrade version if you buy the old copy. Oh, my God. Remember yeah. all that? Yeah. yeah. That was so annoying. Um, yeah. So, like, maybe they're trying to avoid that by doing the backwards compatibility 100% this time. But we don't even know that there is backwards compatibility with we don't PlayStation. Know. Not yet. I mean, Xbox, I'm assuming so. Because There's been a lot of reports. You know? Yeah, I know. So, they keep like, saying it, but we don't know because sometimes they said it was, like, only certain titles. Yeah. And... There was rumor about PlayStation doing it all the way up until release. Yeah, I know. You know what I mean? And then, actually, even for, like, a whole year after the system came out, there was, like, oh, they might patch it at some point. You yeah. can play yourself. Yeah, instead on. we got the, and the, it never the happened. streaming service that allowed us to play, like, yeah. those games. And, yeah. And, but mm. anyway, it, it, it's uh, it sucks a little bit that all these delays are happening. But at the same time, I'm sitting here going, hey, the games I want <laughs> are not getting delayed. They are yeah. coming out when I want. Yeah, the Mega Man Zero collections coming out still. And, you know, uh, you know, Dragon yeah. Ball Kakarot didn't get delayed, you know. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. Is so, it good? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Do we want to just talk about the games we played this month now? Oh, oh yeah. All right. So since we brought it up, Punk, you've been playing Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Yeah. What do you think? Oh my god. Yeah? So good. Yeah. So originally I've been waiting for this game even before it actually had its full name. I think it was like Dragon Ball Project Z. Yeah. It was like it's you know. Um and I was waiting for it. Finally got it. And we'll let you know. My original my when I started playing this, I felt kinda let down. Mm-hmm. But the more I played of it, the more I'm like, oh my god. It just kept my my excitement came back. Um, it was just, it's so fun. Uh, the combat is great. Um, the story follows the anime pretty well. It actually shows little, uh, like, other things that you actually didn't see in the anime. Okay. Um, you get to play as other characters, you know. It's not just Goku. Goku. Mm-hmm. You know, I, you, I think you play Goku for a little bit, and then you're playing as Piccolo. Mm-hmm. And then when Piccolo is training Gohan, you're playing as Gohan a little bit, like, with him and learning how to fly and then fighting Piccolo and everything like that. I, I think in the story, I'm just at Goku fighting Vegeta now mm. on Vegeta's turn grade eight, but spoilers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Spoilers for 1999. Yeah. 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 Oh, before that. Yeah. And no, I was like yeah. 97, 98. No, earlier than that. Is that when it started being aired over here? Oh, when it started being aired over here? Yeah. Dude, dude that was like 95. Was it? Jeez. Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, here's the deal. They didn't do the anything after Frieza here until it hit Comedy Central. Cartoon Network. Or Cartoon Network, yeah. <laughs> what are um, you doing? Comedy Central. I don't know. I didn't have that. I, 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 <laughs> yeah, I know. But, I, I lived in a but, place with but, like but, inferior but. cable. Um, but yeah, the game, yeah. I think, is amazing so far. Mm. I like also the fact that it's not just a fighter now. 
it's it's an RPG with leveling system and learning new moves, doing side quests, um, gathering food, like items to make food, I should say. So that way, when you cook, you get like temporary boosts and permanent boosts, which is Whoa. awesome. Hmm. Um, and they have like this whole community board thing where you can put like emblems of uh, certain characters together, and they give you bonus points for whatever area they're in for like fighting or like cooking stats or something like that, which is kind of cool. And like, and so like, and the battle system is just basically like old school, like, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's like, like Xenoverse. Stuff. Yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think. It would be a little bit better if it was a little bit more like Xenoverse, but it's literally, you know, melee attacks just hit circle and then you hit a trigger and combination like that to do like a special move. Cool. Um, the one thing I don't like about it, though, is the flying. Mm-hmm. Um, is I this like in battle or like out of battle? Out of battle. Okay. Uh, just like going around the world because you go higher or lower depending on one of uh, R1 and R2. So when you're going around, you're hitting the triggers. Mm-hmm. I wish it was the other thumbstick. I feel like it would be a little bit smoother. Mm-hmm. There's times where I'm hitting one of the triggers. I'm like, oh, I'm going down. I need to go up. I feel like there was a game that did that, and I can't remember what it was. There was a similar game. There was a game that had similar mechanics. It might have been one of the Armored Core games. It might have been a mech game. I don't know. Mm. Oh, you know what? It might have been um, Zone of the Enders. That's a weird, it's a weird system to get uh, used to. By the way, DBZ first aired in America in 96. 96. It yep. started in Japan in 89. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's old. Dragon Ball Z? Dragon Ball Z, 89. Wow. Oh, okay. yeah. Dra- the original Dragon Ball was 80. Yeah, it was the 80s. Yeah, it was 84, 85, I think. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the just... game's amazing. Um, I'm going to get the season pass for it because there's going to be more content coming out. There's characters from other game Dragon Ball games in it. So Yeah. That's I don't know. Cool. I mean, it's not really spoilers because yeah, yeah. it's actually not their name, but Android 21's in it. Cool. And there's a trophy for defeating a certain someone from Xenoverse, the Xenoverse series. So, cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I do want to play it. I do want to pick it up, but I just it couldn't be a full, it couldn't have been a full release purchase for me. Mm-hmm. It was the same day at Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp FE. Ah, uh, yes. Our Encore Edition release. Right. So, yeah, yeah. Which which How's that? I mean, it's it's good. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's good. It's it was good. one of the games you were waiting for. You're not super excited about it. Well, okay, it was, but it was not one of my top five of the year because it was just a re-release. Yeah. Um, I played it on the Wii U. I never beat it on the Wii U because it came out the last year of the Wii U. Yeah. And when the Switch hit, I stopped playing my Wii U. Mm-hmm. I just outright stopped. It still sits there, and I never beat that. I never beat uh, Xenoblade Chronicles X. So getting this on the Switch, as with everything I've ever said, it's so much easier to play it on the Switch because I can put it on the TV. I can take it on the go. I don't have to have the game pad. Because in the original game, you would get text messages, and they would show up on the game pad. Oh. Because that, that was that would help progress right. the story and whatnot. Right. And, like, now you just hit the start button. It brings up your, your phone, and, like, you can see all your messages that way. Otherwise, the game feels just like it did. Uh, they did add in a bunch of – I don't know if it's DLC or extra stuff in general. I know the costumes are extra because, like, I got Joker's outfit from Persona 5. That's cool. Yeah, that the main character gets that. Um there's costumes from Shin Megami Tensei 4. There's costumes from uh, the Devil Survivor series. Is it? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. There's a lot of different costumes. It's really, really cool. Different Fire Emblem costumes and whatnot. It's fun. It's kind of like playing a Persona game, but not. It's got its own unique kind of feel to it. Um, we've talked about it before because it's one of the only games we ever really reviewed or talked about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I, I will say this. It does something I absolutely love in that the combat evolves in a really nice progression as you play through the game. Like, to start, it's basic attacks and skills, and mm-hmm. enemies are weak to certain skills and whatnot. But as you go along, when you start using skills your enemies are weak to, in the Shin Megami Tensei series, that always got you an extra turn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In this game, your characters gain abilities that make it so if somebody uses a nice ability and the enemy's weak to it, you then attack with a sword ability. So you immediately start doing combos after each other. Okay. They just automatically hit. Nice. And you start then getting it so all three of your characters are hitting at once. Hmm. And then they add in this whole thing called, like, extra sessions where characters who are not in your party can show up and add in a fourth attack on top of that. That's pretty cool. And if you do the character side stories, you get what are called ad-lib performances because the whole thing is based around music and performing. Right. And randomly, if you do an attack, they'll do this, like, huge extra version of it that hits everyone and does more damage based on whatever the character's, like, specialty is because – you got characters who are pop stars, characters who are actors, mm. things like that. Um, 
it brings in characters from uh, Fire Emblem as the main bosses, which is kind of cool. But otherwise, it's it's fun, it's colorful, and it's nice to have a game that is not all doom and gloom. Like, it's really happy all the time. And it's kind of nice. I like it a lot. And I bought Celeste. Oh, good. It was $6. Oh, good. <laughs> it was on sale, so I, I played a crap load of it last night. Yeah, yeah. It's that that was close to the top for me. That didn't I? I put that in my top five. I think uh, last year. Yeah, or two it, years ago now. It's really yeah. good. It's I, you know, because I'm a stickler. I love you know Meat Boy and you know like difficult platformers. It's mm-hmm. so satisfying. It's really and good. it's it's but it's actually doable. Yeah, nothing's completely out of that you know the realm. Like sometimes you'll be stuck on a room forever, like trying to figure out like how exactly to like mm-hmm. maneuver yourself. But like that's what makes it a lot of fun. But it's also it's also kind of nice because it's a game that only has like two buttons. Yeah, that do anything. You've got the jump button. You've got a dash button. Mm-hmm. But, but the the and and it doesn't get that complicated at all. No, it's just so. a matter of which way do I have to move. Mm-hmm. And but I, they give you new challenges to use the limited things that you have constantly. I loved in the second level when you got like those blocks that you would dash through and you'd ha- you'd go all the way. Yeah. And if it ended at a wall, you just died. Uh-huh. <laughs> like that, it was it was a cool little feature. And also in that same level, like you had to race against basically clones of yourself. Mm-hmm. And if you touch them, you die. Which. Oh yeah. I really really liked. It, it's cool. I just bought it last night and I'm already on level four. I think. Nice. It's it's really good. Yeah, and it's not a terribly long game either. No, I can imagine, but it's good and it's got replayability. I'm trying to get all the strawberries, which mm-hmm. don't do mm-hmm. anything. I have about 75% of them, yeah. Yeah, it even says in the game, like, collecting the strawberries doesn't matter, but if you want to do it to impress your friends, do yeah, it. do it. <laughs> and actually, I on one other thing on it, I got a little, like, postcard before I play the third level. It's like, hey, don't be afraid to die. Be proud of your death count because it shows you're learning. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's really encouraging and nice. <laughs> Way better than Nintendo going, hey, you've died a lot. Here's this invincibility block so you can make it to the <laughs> level. Oh, that's so lame. Screw you, Donkey Kong Country <laughs> Returns. I don't need it. Yeah, the, the Mario U did that too. And 3D uh, Land. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, Lambo, what have you been playing? Um, so like the coolest game I played this month was Blood and Truth. It was the oh yeah PSVR. It was sort of like the the fully realized version of the London Heist from the PSVR worlds. Um, but it was and and it was basically like playing through a really really cool '90s like three and a half hour movie. And, um, like, the running and gunning and stuff felt super natural. Like, not super natural, but <clears throat> rather natural. <laughs> super space Na- natural. natural. Um, and uh, it was the, probably the coolest gunplay I've seen on, on, on it at all. You had, like, four weapons, one at, like, two pistols at each side, and then two, like, guns behind you. And so you kind of had to constantly, like, flip what you were using constantly and reload them. You actually had to, like, grab the, the like, a, like a, a thing off your chest. I got that's like cool. a new clip. Yeah. That's and really And then like cool. slam it into the gun and like, and you could actually like toss it in the air and th- slam the gun down on top of it to reload real fast too. That's awesome. So there's that kind of stuff. And then the, just tons of like puzzle solving. And um, there were all of these great moments where you're kind of like, like, you know, to kind of like end the cool scene, like you're running through. And so it's basically turns into a run and gun, like old school, like arcade shooter. That's really But then cool. you're like jumping through, you know, windows from buildings, jumping onto different ledges and like, so it was like James Bond kind of, you know. That's cool. And it yeah. had a cool ending, a lot of fun. Nice. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and you know, lots of replayability because there's all kinds of extra little targets to hit everywhere. That's yeah. I think that's what more games need is like the replayability. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like something to make it more gamey and stuff. Yeah. You know, because and the story was was really you know kind of generic and stuff like typical family. You know, they're involved in kind of some shady business and stuff, but it played super well. And, uh, you know, it, it's built right for the, the PSVR, so it's mm-hmm. perfect in that way. I was hoping that that was going to be, like, the game, and then Iron Man VR was going to come out, but that got delayed also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, I, but I'll be playing that before the end of this, uh, you know, end of this this spring here, mm-hmm. so I'm cool with that. Yeah, and uh, I started Darksiders 2. That's pretty awesome. You yes. Know? Um, it, it, it's actually <laughs> really satisfying because it, it's it's a lot simpler than, like, playing God of War or something mm-hmm. like that, you know? Yeah. Um, Similar in some ways, more complicated in others. Yeah, yeah. Because th- there's that loot system in it. And it's yeah, all- and yeah. well, and just the idea, like the whole platforming and stuff, is a lot better and more, you know, you know, it works better than a lot of the, those kinds of games. You yeah. know, because I feel like I get like stuck sometimes playing Uncharted and stuff, and I'm, I don't know, I'm trying to hang off the edge while jumping over here, and <laughs> I don't know, it just doesn't feel like a video game. It feels like too real, you know. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I ju- I just like to mention we you and I talked about Dark Siders two a lot. Mm-hmm. I had actually bought it for him for Christmas before <laughs> yeah. we had, before we mentioned it. I'm like he's never played it. He's gonna <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
So it's yeah, really and uh, we've been playing a little bit more Pokemon. Um, yeah, you know, kind of getting excited for the uh, the stuff. I'm um, actually really close to completing my Pokedex. I think oh, I need wow. like 40 more Pokemon. <sighs> I'm I'm about a hundred away. Yeah, I haven't played it in a little while, but it's a hard grind. But yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's going. <laughs> yeah, but it, but it's it's actually kind of satisfying and stuff though too at this point. Yeah, and I started doing uh-huh. the battle tower. That's yeah. actually been like a really cool challenge, uh-huh. right? Because you would... have to you have to pick the right Pokemon and do all the right, it's. Yeah, I wasn't expecting yeah. to see Leon in there too. Yeah, yeah, he'll just pop in. Yeah, too. I was like, oh hey, I'm gonna beat you again. <laughs> if you, because uh, he's the sixth match, I believe. If you beat him, that gives yeah. you the ability to then like in your boxes look at all your Pokemon yep. stats and yep. everything, mm-hmm. which makes. IV and EV training easier, mm-hmm. even though I don't really know what that is. <laughs> we know what you know what it is. Kind of, kind of not. You just don't want to like involve yourself too much in not it. Not that much. Um, yeah. But yeah, Pokemon's been really yeah. good. It's been really nice to just hop in and every now and then I see you punked, like yeah. jump yeah, in. Yeah. <laughs> I love the one morning like I did a raid battle and you were like, oh, I see I'm locked down. <laughs> Won't let me in. <laughs> yeah. <I'm there. laughs> uh, that was actually uh, Wave Chan who did the, who's done artwork and stuff. Uh, yeah. Um, she actually messaged me one morning. So I was on. She's like, Hey, I've got a shiny Eevee raid battle on lock. If you want in, here's the passcode. <laughs> what? I don't, I don't. I don't. I don't actually know Wave Chan. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I was like, yes, I am totally in, and I I got a yeah. shiny Eevee out of it. So shout out that's, to Wave Chan. That's awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do want to say you mentioned replayability earlier. Uh, one game I actually just beat uh, this month that has really good replayability: Outer Worlds. Really? Mm. Yeah. Um, I didn't know if I was really going to enjoy it. But I thought it was amazing. Oh, it's it's so good. And there's actually stuff that I missed. There's like a couple planets I actually didn't even go to, mm-hmm. oh. and I don't have two companions. They're still locked. Yeah. So I mean, replaying, I might be able to get them. Or... Yeah, the, the, every decision you make matters yeah. a lot. And yeah, there was the, the 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 people who have the world record for it can legitimately beat it without glitches in an hour, I believe, like an hour and twenty minutes. Mm-hmm. And there's actually a playthrough like the devs watched and commented the whole time, and That's we're like, awesome. I didn't know you could do that. Like, and they were they were like getting angry that like because <laughs> they, they, they create specifically created certain like soft locks to keep you out of certain parts of the game, but yeah. then like people found ways around it, you know. So so like the the you can get through the game proper, yeah, without doing most of the game, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, that's sort of like Zelda, you yeah. know, in the same way, Breath of the Wild. Uh, yeah, but that was intended. Yeah. Talking about Zelda real quick. Yeah. Actually, did you see the uh, the one uh, speed run that someone did that they brought in the what was it from Star Fox the uh, R wing the R wing yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was cool that but was... they didn't have to do anything like special with it it wasn't any glitch it was just like I guess they had to save the file or something like that a certain name. And then it brought it in because it was actually code already in. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. Cool. I yeah. just saw it and I was like, yeah, oh, that's We're cool. living in that age now. Yeah, but most of the time I see stuff for like any anything like randomly popping in a game. I'm like, oh, cool. Somebody modded it, whatever. <laughs> but huh. yeah. um, So that's what we played. Yeah. Well, we should mention, though, since yeah. Lotaz not here. He's been playing yeah. DBZ Kakarot. Yeah. 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 I guess he just has like 60 hours in it already. <laughs> he has 60 hours <laughs> and, he's at, away. and yeah. he said like – well, he said he was on hour 52 and he just hit the resurrection of Boo, which is, of yeah. course, the beginning of the last saga right. in the game. And, like, that's impressive to me mm-hmm. that, like, that game is lasting that long. Granted, when you're built on 200 plus hours episodes, not 200 plus hours, 200 <laughs> plus episodes of stuff, mm-hmm. I mean, it's not surprising you get 60 yeah. hours out of it. But, yeah. and, but anyways, it, it does follow the anime really well. It adds stuff. And I think even Slow Tad mentioned when we were talking to him, like, if you haven't watched the anime – play the game yeah this is way a way better way to get through it yeah i there's always a part of me that because i grew up with dbz like i want to watch it again right because i haven't really experienced much of it as a series since i was younger dragon ball z kakarot exactly <laughs> and now i'm like instead of re-watching through all that yep. i could just play the game yeah. which and i've only ever me. watched up to the end of the first frieza saga i don't think you even watched the end of the first frieza saga because... no i did because like <laughs> somehow i saw it okay because yeah. i was gonna say in america it either got to... your place or something yeah yeah, yeah. Originally in America, it we only got ended up to with the Goku Ginyu showing course. up on Namek. Yeah, and that was it. Goku <laughs> got... shows up on Namek and then end. Yeah, um, I do. Ha- I, I remind me though. There, I have one more gripe with Kakarot. Mm. Um, not himself. He's great. Yeah. Uh, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Uh, for like side quests and stuff like that, when they have little text boxes come up, they're not actually talking. It's just the text. They make weird noises. They're just like, "Yo," and saying like, "Hey, how's it going? You know, do you need help with anything?" Other person's like, Rrr! 
I was like, all right, I don't need all that. <laughs> but anyway, sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. I mean, design, design decisions. Mm-hmm. But right. it's nice to see that in the past like couple of years also, we've gotten some really great DBZ games. Yes. Especially when there's been no- – there was crap for so long. Mm-hmm. Like, not to say that the Budokai games were crap, but when they hit mm-hmm. Budokai Tenkaichi, there was definitely an upswing. Yeah, the Xenoverse games were amazing. And now this is just great. And Fighter Z is yes. doing yeah. really well. Uh-huh. Yeah, they think they're releasing more characters now. I think uh, Mystic uh, Goku's coming out. Ultra out. Instinct. Long yeah, Ultra Instinct, sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, they're just releasing more Goku. <laughs> <laughs> this, Goku is to Dragon Ball Fighter Z what Fire Emblem characters <laughs> are. It's way worse. We've come full circle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, on that note, let's talk about what's coming out in the month of February mm-hmm. and what we're going to be playing. Um, I don't think anybody's going to be playing this, but I wanted to bring it up. The Dark Crystal Tactics game is coming out. Mm-hmm. Mm. Which I – that blows my mind that this <laughs> this old Jim Henson fantasy movie, the guy TV series, is now getting a video game, and it's like a turn-based strategy RPG. <laughs> and I kind of – I don't like, know who it's geared towards. I don't know, yeah. but, like, I've never seen the movie. I've never seen the series. But this game, like, when it hits, I kind of want to watch it and just see how it goes because <laughs> I like turn-based strategy RPGs. I might play it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I, I'm a huge fan of the movie, and the the TV show is pretty decent so far. I've only watched the first like three episodes, but well, then you might like the game because yeah, I mean, maybe, you, you maybe. do play turn based strategy games. One or two, yeah, one or two. <laughs> Project Cross Zone, yeah. yeah, and Disco, and Disco. God. Anyway, uh, after that, Dreams officially oh. releases oh, this yeah. month. So I, I've put a f- many hours into Dreams already. Yeah, I've started to create a few things. I have like some dumb like little character models and stuff made up. Uh, seeing some of the stuff people do, they must be spending hundreds of hours on some of these shots and stuff. I would love to see you make like a music video in it. Uh, that that's actually my my goal eventually. Yeah. Like that's one hundred percent what I want to do with it. You know, because it would be great to just you know use that and have like I don't know CG versions of us or uh-huh. whatever you know in there, and it would be super awesome. But like. Wow, people are now. The only thing is, then people are are also like creating assets and then like putting them up on their like download sphere, yeah. so you can just download a lot of cool stuff. And you don't need like, to pay for it or anything. No. You just okay, cool. No, p- everything on there so far is like completely like kind of wide open. Nice. If you want to share stuff, you can just put it up there for other people to use, and that's including like lighting algorithms and I, and like motion and and gravity like and and that kind of stuff. Wow. And like so, people are really really going deep on creating cool stuff and. You know, people are like basically kind of saying, oh, when the when Dreams launches, my game is going to be done. Like there's so many people on like the Dreams subreddit yeah. and stuff. I don't think you I don't think Oof. they're going to have people charging for their own assets only because like I could see that becoming really complicated. This is true. Yeah, no, yeah. but they are. They do want to, And they've talked about it. They um, Media Molecule, the people who made it, they they want people to make their own games and then like basically like make a standalone version that people can sell and stuff like, right. that they use their software to make. Oh. Yeah. All right, that's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah so like it, it's going to be weird and cool <laughs> eventually. <laughs> yeah. Eventually. Uh-huh. But but this is like this is only on PlayStation, right? Right, yeah. So like you're just using a controller? A this controller? Be- um I use actually I it, it's actually a little bit easier to use the 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 VR. Arms, the VR the Oh wow, really? Yeah. yeah. Um, just because like the, the, the way you can like grow and shrink things and yeah. like, there's so much more subtlety in like the way your arms move. That's awesome. I was going to say, I could imagine it being better in VR considering yeah. what some people yeah. are making. I yeah. haven't put, there, there is no VR yet for it, but the, the, the controllers. Oh, right. Well, that, well, I meant the motion controls. Yeah. I yeah. didn't mean VR. Yeah. No, they're, they're, they're going to have VR support. Though, yeah. For I, it. I just knew there wasn't any right now. Yeah. There's a lot of cool things. People have remade like chunks of Skyrim people. Someone uh-huh. remade the Final Fantasy seven, like Midgar. You know, whole s- section of the game, yeah, and it like looks and plays awesomely. It's it's crazy. Yeah, uh-huh. so you know, whatever, I'm down for it. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> so when it re- officially launches, hopefully they'll get rid of that little watermark in the bottom right hand corner because that's the main thing I've been sort of waiting for. <laughs> 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 like I just don't, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to put a music video out and then be like made in dreams, right? Although I wouldn't mind that ultimately because right. it would, you know, maybe you know, there's some some cool stuff happen, but eh. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, a big one, considering mm-hmm. what you were playing this month, Lambo. Darksiders Genesis launches on mm-hmm. consoles this month. Mm-hmm. Isn't that like a top down now? It's it's Dia- it's like co- it's a co op Diablo esque right. kind of game. You play a strife and war, and you go through dungeons and everything, and it looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm super excited to pick that up and play it. Uh, it's coming out on Switch, PS4, and I'm pretty sure Xbox One. And it's couch co op. Mm-hmm. Couch co op. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'll I'll definitely be picking that up when we can yeah. play that. Um, we talked about already Mega Man Zero ZX collection. I'm all over it. I am too. The Zero games are really I, in in the Mega Man like 
sphere, I feel like they're really like underappreciated. Mm-hmm. They're also punishing. Like, they are super punishing. They're really really punishing. But if you need an X fix, like the zero games are the closest you're gonna get to it because they're fast paced, but they are hard. Mm-hmm. And the ZX games are cool because they're kind of open world. They're a little Metroidvania style, yeah. which is kind of interesting. But I'm really excited for that. And they add in a couple of multiplayer features to that. Persona 5 Scramble is this month. I can't believe it's this month. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 coming out this month. All right. I'm picking it up. Uh, I is it in Switch and PS4? Will. Switch and PS4. Yeah. 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 I'll probably get it for the Switch. It just feels better. Looks better on the Switch. Well, more of a Switch title to me. But I don't know. I did I did watch, um, or I skimmed through, somebody, I think Sony put up a bunch of gameplay for it. Okay. It looks like Persona 5. Like, uh-huh. you go around the city, you still yeah. do your typical stuff, and then the gameplay is still the Dynasty Warriors style combat. Right. But, but, and this was really cool, you have a party of four with you. Uh-huh. So you pick your party and you take them with you. And also, there were moments where you could stop and select a skill to do. Oh, okay. Like, it, it froze it and it opened up, like, yeah. the battle menu from 5. So, it this is what I love about some of the Warriors games when they incorporate the stuff from the game. Right. As long as it works well. Because I've mentioned before, Fire Emblem Warriors did a great job of taking that Dynasty Warriors gameplay but incorporating the strategy to it. Right. Because you had your other units and you'd open the menu and be like, okay, I need you to go here, you to go here, and everything. The only one that I still don't think worked real well was Hyrule Warriors. but They just slowed the gameplay down a lot. This does not look like it's going to slow it down, really, because the combat still looks fast and like yeah. nice and flourishy. So we'll wait and see. But I'm excited for that. Uh, the last two I just wanted to bring up, because I don't think any of us have really played them, but it's interesting how long they've been going. Yakuza 5 yeah. is coming out. Like, that, Sweet. That's kind of awesome. Mm-hmm. That comes out this month. I, I, have not- I don't even remember hearing anything about a new Yakuza. Oh, they've yeah. been talking about a new Yakuza for a while. Actually, right. I think I think six, which is announced to come out then, is going to a turn based RPG style game. <laughs> oh. Yeah, right? Weird. Okay. Because the Yakuza games were all like third person brawlers yeah. and everything. It was basically what Sh- what Shenmue would be in the current year. Uh huh. But okay. I've never really played a Yakuza game. Have you guys? Oh, I mean no. Judgment, which is kind of like it was uh, off the same series. Yeah. Was but it it was all right. I don't know. Uh, from what I heard, Judgment was not as good as the Yakuza games. Yeah. But this one, like, there's apparently so much to do. It's like Grand Theft Auto, but right. Japanese. Well, it's the same thing with Judgment, too. Like, you could go into, like, these different places, go to, like, arcades and stuff like that. And, yeah, there's a lot to do. Yeah. <laughs> and and another one that I had no idea we were getting another another game in this, end, like, this series for. But Romance of the Three Kingdoms 14. <laughs> 14 14 wow like this game's been going this series has been going on this is the sleeper n- rpg series 100 percent uh, strategy yeah, yeah. It, it's not i don't think it's i think it's real-time strategy is it it might be i don't know huh. i always thought they were like turn-based strategy. they might be turn-based but here's my thing like that yeah, series, I, 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 see, see, I don't know because i've never touched one but it's been going on like <laughs> up to 14 and they keep getting released in america so somebody's playing them <laughs> and they're like super Japanese and everything. So why have none of us played it? You know why? Because it's historical and uh Yeah, they're turn based. Yeah, turn-based? I don't like history. Yeah. I'm not I'm not, a, I'm not a big historical buff. But like it just blows my mind. I saw that and I'm like, really? We're still getting these? So don't like so much history you can make. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But mm-hmm. uh that's what's coming out this month. A lot of cool stuff I'm really looking forward to. Like mm-hmm. I said, the Mega Man game, Persona 5 Scramble, Darksiders. Mm-hmm. I, I look forward to Dreams getting its full release and seeing what people make. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, I think the, the community is about to sort of explode. Because yeah. uh, just now, finally, people are really creating cool, super hyper-realistic stuff. People have developed, like, first-person, like, style, like, elements where, like, you know, with the arms and holding a gun. Uh, like, there's so much. So I, I feel like the moment the game kind of goes, like... You know, more wide, it'll be huge. And I'm excited to see what they do with VR as well. Yeah. I feel like that could be really awesome. I hope that comes with the launch or somewhere yeah. around the launch. Yeah. Because I'm, there are, I know there are people who are designing stuff to be used in VR uh-huh. for when it does hit. So, it'll it'll be cool. Oh, I look yeah. forward to seeing. I look forward to seeing what happens. In all honesty, all that stuff getting delayed mm-hmm. just makes me not feel bad about getting all this I, other I crap. <laughs> I think it's going to perfect perfectly highlight some of these smaller releases in the first half of the year. So yeah. like this yeah. might be like really cool prime indie game time. 
and you know smaller releases yeah because that's the other thing is we've gotten a lot of cool indie games mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. the past few years have been great for it yeah so i can't wait to see what and i, I like that it kind of clears my calendar out i have Mega Man and you know eventually iron man and i'm probably gonna get trials of mana when that comes out but. isn't doom eternal coming out soon too oh that's the, oh yeah that comes out in march as yeah well. yep that's march Ooh, yeah. yep <laughs> uh on switch sometime later yeah but that that looks really really cool yeah mm-hmm. so i've actually been playing doom 3 mm. again I, so. yeah i have it on my switch it's it's actually pretty good yeah it is it just doesn't it takes quite... a while to like really kind of you have to get past the first like yeah i was gonna say yeah. it doesn't feel like doom to start yeah it feels like it just... still doesn't feel like doom even further in but it, it it's it's from that kind of cool ps2 you know ish era and it, it just plays so nicely yeah 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 i've been playing doom one mm-hmm. on oh. my switch because nice. There's something. It's still good. Yeah, it's something about that and like Wolfenstein 3D, like those classic games. They get me. Mm-hmm. Sends me back to my childhood on my Windows 3.1 computer, <laughs> opening up DOS. <laughs> oh man! But mm-hmm. anyway, that was the month of January leading into February. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, tell us what you played. What are you looking forward to? What do you think of these games getting delayed? Are you upset? Did you play the Kingdom Hearts 3 DLC? Does the story make <laughs> sense? Let us know in the comments below. And did you toss a coin to your Witcher? Because if you did, I'm going to ban you. <laughs> Get out. Oh, Valley, <laughs> I don't even know the rest of the song. I just like, toss a coin to your Witcher. Shut up! That's the, part, that's the only part that matters. <laughs> okay. But anyway, um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. If you're listening to this on audio podcast, we're, of course, on YouTube. Our channel is Nurture Domus. If you're watching this on the YouTube channel, we are a podcast service on all major podcast services, yep. such as even Spotify. Even Spotify. So don't forget to check us out there. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining us. And for Nurture Domus, I'm Dr. Pants. Lambo. I'm Punk. And we will catch you again some other time.